Welcome to my Louisiana kitchen. I'm Chef Celeste and today I'm going to show you my sensation salad, a Louisiana seafood gumbo, and we're going to finish it out with a Feliciana bread pudding. That is sure to please. So I aim to take you all around Louisiana so you can enjoy the cuisine that I have grown to love. Okay folks, we're gonna start off with my bread pudding. This is a Louisiana classic, and it's something that I learned from two wonderful chefs, Chef Ron Saunier and Chef John French. So this is our way, because I've incorporated that into my style. So our ingredients, we have our sugar, we have whole eggs, we have bread, we have pure vanilla. We don't want vanilla extract, we want pure vanilla. I have some whole milk and half and half. So these are all the ingredients that's gonna go in there. It sounds nice and simple, but it's simply delicious. So the first thing we're gonna do is break the bread. You don't have to slice it in nice even pieces. You just pick it up and break it. You can get the kids in the kitchen with you on this one here. Just break it into nice pieces. Now this is a fairly hearty bread here. So that's why I have the mixture in there. That way it gives us a nice texture when it's finished. So whatever bread you like, just kind of use that in there. Just make sure it doesn't have any garlic or anything like that to it so just use a variety okay so now we're gonna crack the eggs let me show you how I crack the eggs you can do this in a separate bowl hit it on the bowl fingers here open up okay you need to see that again one more time and then we're gonna discard that let me toss that right there hit crack done so we're gonna have six of these going into the bowl so let me get that in there yes for the pros that's how you do it go on in there no, we're not dropping any shells in here. These are some things that I'm gonna teach you throughout. Just some easy kitchen tips, okay? So we have all the eggs in there. Let me rinse my hands down because I like my hands nice and clean. Now, with that, I'm gonna dump my sugar in. All the sugar's gonna go in. I'm gonna blend that in nice and simple. So just stir that in. We'll add the milk in a little bit later. So just give it a nice little whisk in there. You can put this in, you can use tools if you like to, but I like to teach you the basic way because that way, what if your tools don't work? You, you can't make your bread pudding? Yes, you can. So just whisk, whisk, whisk. Now we're gonna add in, this is incorporated, look at that. So now we're gonna add in the milk or the heavy cream. I'm gonna add in one pint. I'm gonna put it all in there, okay? You can put it in your cute little cups if you like. Now this one here, you're gonna give it a gentle stir real quick because you don't want it splashing all over you because it will. And when you start to mix it in, just go nice and gentle, nice and gentle. My oven is already preheated to 375 degrees. So you want that nice and warm by the time you get ready to put your bread pudding in. Now we're gonna add some vanilla. We're gonna add about a tablespoon actually of vanilla. Pure. Let that go on in there. Give it a quick little stir. Then let's come in with the milk. We're gonna add about a cup of milk. You got your milk in there. Now if you're the person that has to measure everything out, it's okay. But you're gonna get this recipe down pat to where you can just put it in and you know you have it right. So let me sit my whisk over here. Now your bread is gonna go in. You want the bread to soak. I like to soak mine for about 10 minutes. I don't do it for a long time because you don't want it to, I don't like mine to get too soft. So I'm just gonna press down gently in there so I can get it all in there. I want it all coated, okay? So bread pudding is one of the Louisiana classics that if you come to visit, you have got to have the bread pudding. But wherever you are, if you wanna do Louisiana cooking, just try this in your house, test it out on your friends and your family. You can play this back as many times to get the recipe that you want. And believe it or not, my recipe is just this simple. So this is about to go into the pan. I have a uh, nine by 13 pan. It is not lined. I omit the butter from mine because I like to do a healthier take 
on our cuisine without losing any of the flavor. So we're about to put this into the pan. Nice and simple. Let me show you what we're about to do. How complicated is that? Pour into the pan. Scrape from the bowl. Let's get it all in there. Now I'm going to sit this over here. Just move everything out of the way as you're cooking so you can keep a clean kitchen. You want a clean kitchen. Okay, you see how this lines the bowl. You see how most of the liquid is on this side here. Now that is important. I want you to kind of stir it around in here a little bit. Okay, get that liquid over there so we have a nice mixture of everything. And you see how everything is nice and coated. So I'm gonna turn it around so I can get over here. Let me move my eggs because that part is done. And we are about to go into the oven. So once I get this into the oven, then I'm gonna start working on my gumbo because the key to the gumbo is the root. So this is gonna cook while we're doing that. So let me place this in the oven and let's get started on the gumbo, okay? Now, we're about to get to what I call the granddaddy of them all, the Louisiana gumbo. Now, I first off, I'm gonna go over the ingredients with you. So we're gonna have our Holy Trinity, which is our bell pepper. I am filming in New York, guys. So we have red bell peppers. Use what you have. So uh, we have our bell pepper, we have our onion, we have our celery and garlic goes in there also. So we're gonna chop that up. We have our sausage, andouille is better. And then we're gonna add shrimp, gulf shrimp, no imports. We have our crab, our gumbo crab, and we have shrimp. Look at that baby right there. Now when you do your shrimp, you want to keep the heads and the shells. I have that in the back on the stove and I'm making my shrimp stock or my seafood stock. And then we have two types of crab. I have back fin and I have jumbo lump. These are all Louisiana seafood so you want to make sure that you're authentic with this dish is very important okay so let me show you we're going to cut up the celery and the onions and everything so let me break this off if you don't have fresh where you are and frozen is the only thing you can get that's fine we're going to roll with that okay so for those of you that don't know how to know, hold the knife this is not what you do okay this is not it you want forefinger here you want thumb right here that way you have control so Let's go, let's split down the middle of the celery. I like mine to be like a medium dice. That way, you know, I have some bite when I'm doing my, when I'm eating it. So, however you like it, that's how you cut it, okay? So I have my celery, I think I want one more in there. So that's like two, this is gonna be three stalks. You see how quick and easy this is to cut it up. It's no big deal, just chop. I'm looking at you while I'm chopping. I know where my fingers are, okay? So we're gonna line that up right here. Take the bell pepper, slice in here, and we're just gonna go around, okay? This is how you keep all the seeds intact. Just go around. This is not waste. Cut that off, go around. Yes, in my restaurants, I look in the trash can because I wanna make sure my money is not in the trash can. You pay hard earned money for your food, use it, okay? And then you just wanna chop the top and bottom up. About the same as I did for the celery. Now, just make ribbons. That's all we're doing is making some ribbons. Slice all the way through. You see that? If you're making fajitas, there you go. But we're not making fajitas, we're making gumbo. So we're gonna slice that again. So come on through. Turn it to the side and just slice. That's all I'm doing, just slice it. The key to when I get to the onion, I'm not gonna take all day to cut that onion so you're not gonna have tears. So come on, this is what I'm gonna do right here. So I got my celery, got all that good stuff going. Onion down the middle. Cut the back off. 
cut the front put that in the trash keep your trash bowl or whatever handy that way you're working clean at all times you can take this part if you like and dump this into your pot for your stock I choose not to do the skins you know I, that's just my preference but if you want to do that that's fine I will allow you to do that so we got that off I'm keeping the back of the onion intact see that still together in the back that way I can slice here and I have my dice now all of this is taking no time so it should take you no more than five to ten minutes to get this cut up okay you can cut this in advance put it in a baggie put it in the refrigerator and when you need it just pull it out for whatever you are gonna use it for okay and then I'm just gonna let this sit here for a minute because I'm not about to use it just yet okay I have all of my ingredients cut up for that portion of it the next thing we're gonna cut up is our sausage remember you want your sausage in there nice and pretty leave your sausage in ringlets that's all I'm gonna do little rounds look at that so we'll cut up a good bit of sausage in there the seafood is already shelled so now I'm gonna teach you my most important part which is making the roux so we're gonna go to the back and make our roux okay now I like to get my okra started a little separately that way I can get all of what we call the slime cooked out so just let that go you hear that sizzle we're not trying to overcook it but in the pot the large pot I have my oil we're gonna do equal parts oil and flour it is very important and it's also important that you pay attention to what you're doing the roux is starting to bubble up a little bit and I like that so you just stir 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 one of my uh, favorite things about making a roux is I love to watch the colors change because right now we're at a blonde roux you know if you're gonna make a bechamel or something like that a cream sauce that's the stage where we are right now but then it's gonna move on and it's literally gonna start to smell like peanut butter and that's where you start to make your brown gravies and things like that but we're gonna push this all the way till it's like dark brown and that's where you get that nice rich color from because we're not using any browning agents or anything like that this is going to be my browning agent right there so we're just going to stir while that's going I have my shells in the back that has been covered with cold water and you bring that up to a boil and then you reduce that back down to a simmer and you're going to get all that nice flavor out I've added some salt pepper and garlic to that so we can have the flavor in there and you see my you see my okra see that going it smells so good in here your house is going to smell like this too so you are going to be the envy of your friends when you have your Louisiana cooking party because that's what you need to do if you're watching this here uh, so I just want you to sit back enjoy and I'm going to show you this color change in a minute okay So now this is the color that I actually like. It's a nice dark rich brown. So what I do next is add in all of my other ingredients. So I'm gonna add in my Trinity. I'm gonna add in my sausage. So actually not all the ingredients. I'm not putting my seafood in yet. I'll leave that for last because it's very delicate and I don't wanna overcook my seafood. So I'm just gonna actually brown this off in my roux. Your roux is gonna seize up a little bit. It's okay, just stir and it's gonna relax again, okay? So once you see that happen, like I said, don't fret. It's all gonna pull back together. So give it a quick stir on here. Let me grab something so I can add in my okra. The okra is where I like it. A lot of that extra, what I call slime has come off. So, and the thing I like for you all to do for me, I like to see your finished product so when you try this at home just tag me send us a message let us know that you like what you saw if you're visiting in Baton Rouge just stop on in the, into one of the restaurants again I'm Chef Celeste so I have Chef Celeste Bistro so uh, we're in downtown Baton Rouge take a look at that so all of this is starting to come together 
So just let it stir, let it cook for a little bit. Um, it's gonna be okay. You're still gonna stir periodically because you don't want to burn anything. So I actually have my heat on low now. So I'm gonna put, keep it on low for a minute. And just let this go. Then I'm gonna strain my stock because I don't want to put all the shells and all of that stuff in there. We're going to have all that wonderful seafood that's going in there already. So um, let me do that and I'll show you what it looks like in a minute because what you don't want to do, you want to let your stock cool down a little bit. You don't want to add the hot liquid to the hot roux because it will splash up and I don't want you to get burned. So you're going to let this get a little bit room temperature, okay? So I'll show you in a minute how we're going to pour this in here. Now we are about to add in all that wonderful stock that we made from our Louisiana seafood shells. Look at that going in. All right. I'm gonna give it a quick stir to loosen that roux back up. So come on over here, take a look at that. It is holding my color. That's why we took it so dark because when you put the liquid in, it's gonna lighten up just a little bit. But this is looking like a nice, rich, wonderful, beginning of a gumbo because we're not done yet. Now we're going to start adding some flavor in there. I'm going to add a little bit more salt. I'm going to add one, two pinches of salt. Now we have some Creole spice. This is my um, seasoning blend. I'm going to add some Creole garlic in here. You see two healthy dollops of that. Some crushed red pepper because I like crushed red pepper. And we gotta bring some heat. We're putting some cayenne pepper in here. For right now, if you're in Louisiana, I want two, okay? If you're not in Louisiana, give yourself one, okay? And then you work your way up to two pinches. That's what you do. I don't wanna make it too hot for you. So, give that a stir. Now to the good part. We're gonna add the shrimp in. These are all peeled and deveined, okay? So we're gonna add this in, give me about two pounds of shrimp going in. Now from the shrimp, we're gonna add the gumbo crab in. Now my lump crab meat and my back fin, we're not gonna add that in yet until the last minute because I wanna keep those nice lumps in there. So, and it's extra tender. This bad boy is going in just like that because I wanna see it in there like that. So. Um, Part of the things when you're cooking, what you like to do, do it. It's your food, it's your recipe, okay? So, crab going in, all of it. I want all that flavor, okay? Sit that over there. And now, we wait. We just let this cook down for a little bit. This is gonna take you about a half an hour to 45 minutes before it's cooked, but you wanna let it simmer uh, so you can start this in the morning and, and be done with it. Let it simmer for about an hour. And then um, it actually tastes so good the next day. And then you're gonna be done, okay? about to make the salad dressing for our sensation salad. I'm just pouring my oil into some cute little cups because that's what I like to do. So pull out a little wine glass, a little whatever you like, put your oil in there. It'll be so pretty, make you feel like a chef. So in here I got my oil and set that to the side. Now I'm gonna grab my spices. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt in there. I'm also gonna go in and add a pinch of my Creole garlic in there. You can add some Cajun seasoning in there, whatever you have. Um, and then a sprinkle of parsley. And now I'm gonna grab my Parmesan cheese. This is freshly grated, actually uh, Romano cheese. And I'm gonna put in about two cups. Put all of that in. It's better if you grate it yourself as opposed to just going to the store and just buying it already prepared. If you buy it already prepared, I won't talk about you, but I want you to have that experience, okay? So you can put it into a shaker and just shake, but we are not done yet because this salad will be good. It's not sensational yet because we're missing a major ingredient. Lemon juice. So I have my lemons here and these are gonna be fresh grease. So you wanna 
have them out of the refrigerator for a minute and just roll them for a minute on your cutting board. And then slice down the middle and just leave it up like this here and squeeze. Squeeze, if you get some seeds in there, pick them out. It's okay, you'll live, okay? Get all your juice in there. Now I'm gonna go a little bit more. I don't want it all. Okay. I need one more lemon. Got it right here. And these are not trash. So I like to tell people try not to waste when possible. So you want to just go ahead and um, you can put that in a pot, let it boil a little bit, kind of give your house some aroma. And let me tell you a little bit about myself because we're about done here. I'm gonna show you how to plate this up. Um, I grew up in Detroit, Michigan. And I loved watching Justin Wilson on television, and I did that for years. So as an adult, when I moved to Louisiana, almost 30 years ago, how cool do you think it was for me to be on television in Louisiana, cooking food, have the restaurants, feeding my customers? It was just a joy for me to come down, learn this cuisine, and bringing this to you now, just it, it just makes me happy. So I, because I love all things Louisiana, I love the cuisine, and it just doesn't get any better than our Louisiana cuisine. So you want to put this in here. Let it, you can let it sit for about an hour, and we're just going to toss that. I pre-made my salad a little bit. You don't have to, and it doesn't take a lot. So put this on here. Shake it up a little bit. I'm gonna actually toss this here and uh, let me get my handy dandy little gadgets here so I can show you how we're gonna toss it together. I added some croutons to my salad because I like croutons. And I put some tomatoes on the side. If you want tomatoes on there, that's fine. But this is nice, traditional, with my little twist on there. And I'm gonna do something here. I need a taste tester. You want to taste? Hmm? Try it when you're at home. You need taste testers. I love people trying things all throughout. So that way you know it's going to taste good because you should have tasted it already. But then when you get their nod of approval or they put it in their mouths and they're like, mm -hmm, you don't need them to say anything else because you know you've done a good job already. So just kind of dress your plate back out. Put this on here. Put my croutons, make everything look pretty. I'm gonna wipe it back down. So, let me see here. I'll wipe it back down in a minute. We're gonna plate everything up for you and we'll be back and I'll tell you a little bit more about me. Okay, now folks, we are ready to plate up. And you see nothing here was overly complicated. It's just following simple steps. So that's what I like you to understand, especially about our food here in Louisiana. The, the flavors are so complex, but the cooking, it doesn't have to be. So we have our salad in here and um, I have it in the bowl. I'm just gonna top it off with a little bit more dressing around the side. That's a done deal. Now let's come and plate up the gumbo. This is the good part. So in the bowl, I'm gonna put a little bit of all the goodness in here. I've already dropped in my crab meat and you have all your, your shrimp and look at that. He just wants to hang on to the pot. All right, add a little more broth. I'm gonna top that off with some rice and I'll clean the bowl up in a minute. Don't worry about that. Now we're going for the presentation. Okay, so let's go here, get that rice off of there. Yeah, your hands are gonna be a little bit dirty, but that's okay. Get that in there. Let me get my parsley, put that on there. Because you want your food to look pretty as well as edible. You know it's gonna taste delicious already, so don't even worry about that. Get those little pieces off of there. I want some parsley sprigs on my plate. Make it look a little happy. We're coming up to Mardi Gras season. So we're gonna put some color on this plate. 
There we go. And I want a couple pieces of my bread to go in there because you're going to need some bread with that. All right. We have our gumbo. We have our salad. And we, we're going to round it out with the bread pudding. I put the sauce on the bottom, poured a little bit on top, and then went back over with some powdered sugar. So that's what we have on here. So nice, simple. You're cooking like Chef Celeste now. So you may not have grown up in Detroit and moved to Louisiana to cook, but you can sure cook like me. You can get those Louisiana flavors in there. And that's what I want you to do. Play this back as many times as you need to. And some of our other episodes, we're gonna have crawfish etouffee, we're gonna make pralines. I know you love pralines, I know you've heard about them and you love to eat them when you come down to Louisiana. So we're gonna make that. We're gonna make shrimp bisque. It's gonna be a whole festival of things. Thanks for tuning in to this episode where we made our sensation salad. We have the wonderful gumbo that I know you're gonna love. And we finished it out with the uh, Feliciana bread pudding. So if you like what you see, follow me on Instagram at Chef Celeste Gill. That's also my Facebook handle and the website is chefceleste.com. So folks, on our next episode, we are making Louisiana crawfish etouffee. So I'm Chef Celeste and I'll see you next time.